Hello, welcome back to the fish lot there out on the shore. You wouldn't believe it today, I'm chucked in out of the wind. You wouldn't believe it today, but it is howling a gale of wind off the top of us. Look at that for clarity. Just look at that. I've got some amazing conditions today. I've never dived this spot before, so I don't exactly know what I'm going to find. I'm just, I'm just eager to be out on such a lovely day. I've got my gear, amazing conditions. Let's go and see what we can find.
Tell you what, oh, <laughs> just checking for bogies. Yeah, what an amazing dive. That was incredible. So many amazing different things. I hope the footage is showing out all right. Now, it might look warm, but the water isn't. <laughs> yeah, just incredible. And I managed to find myself a few nice little tasty treats. Oh, a nice hen crab there. A cracking lobster. And there were so many of these guys that I thought it would be rude not to. So yeah, spider crab, lobster, and edible crab. Got the trifecta of crustaceans. Now, uh, let's get change. We'll sort these guys out. Right, I've got change and I've been back to the van. 
Now I phoned Hannah and the kids to see if they wanted to come down for a bit of a cook up on the beach because it's such a lovely afternoon. Unfortunately, James isn't feeling too well. So what I'm gonna do, this is the plan, is the hen crab, the female edible crab, yep. Because females have got more body meat, you can see it's a female by the big pan underneath, smaller claws and a large hump on the back. Now females have got more body meat than claw meat. We prefer the claw meat. So I'm gonna let her go. She's gonna go back. The lobster, the cracking lobster that we've got in there, he's a, he's a stunner. Yeah. He's gonna go home. I'm gonna take him home so Hannah and I can eat, um, eat him at home. The spider crab, Mr. Spider Crab. You, I'm gonna cook you up on the beach. One for now. One to go back, and one for later. Right, we have a plan, let's get at it. <laughs> As if by magic. All I'm doing there is, I'm building up a little bit of a fire. These are just off cuts from the fish locker workshop. Little bits of projects that me and James have had. These are all the little bits that are left. And all I'm gonna do there is, I'm just gonna let that burn down to build a bed of coals. When that's ready, we'll get this guy butchered off. In the meantime, let's take this lady and put her back. While that fire's burning down to coals, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with this crab here. Now, the easiest way to dispatch these guys is either to knock them really hard right there on a rock and flip their back off, or if you take a, take a blade, lift the vent up and go straight in like that. That was how quick it was. He's out, he's completely flopped, look. Over in a second. Now to butcher him off, what I'm gonna do, the main of the meat is in these claws, these legs, and in these parts here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break those parts up, split them in half, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna cook them. Right, a quick bit of anatomy. Inside of, inside of there you can see, there was a little bit of the internal organs. These here, along the sides, are called dead man's fingers. These are the gills. Inside of here are its gonads and its guts. Now, I don't advise eating internal organs of crustaceans because any harmful bacteria or chemicals that this crab might have experienced eating or being near in its life will be concentrated in its internal organs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these gills off and go and wash all this out in the sea. There you can see I've washed out all of the insides there. You can see quite a lot of meat in there. That hole at the bottom, that there, is where I pierced my knife through. All these are full of meat, your legs are full of meat, your claws are full of meat. Really simple to do. Now all there is to do is to separate it. It's got a natural line down there and you just need to go. That's it butchered off. Now before I cook them, if you're going to boil them, you just boil them straight as they are. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap them in tin foil and then I'm going to steam them on the coals. So your claws here, see how hard they are, I'm gonna have to give these a knock with a rock just to break them all, just to let a little bit of the butter in. So I'll get the tin foil laid out and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. You see, that's enough there to fit one side in like that. And then I'm just gonna wrap it all up. But first off, a little bit of a knock and 
Now, I was hoping to find some wild garlic on the way down here, but our local area has just been completely ransacked. Now the fire's died down a bit. We'll just ease those guys on there. This is a possible note to self. If you're going to come down, if you're going to do this type of thing, bring a roll of tin foil with you. Don't be stingy with it. I've <laughs> got some at home and I thought, yeah, that'll about do. Anyway, I've torn it. Look, torn a hole in it. Yeah, what you're supposed to be able to do is you're supposed to be wrap them up completely so no air gets out and they steam in their own juices and a little bit of butter. Yeah. Ten minutes, we'll have them off. This is more like it, isn't it? I don't know if you can hear them sizzling in there. Yep. Bring your gloves, John. <laughs> Couple more minutes and they'll be ready to come off. Yeah, I reckon they're about ready. Get myself all set up and I'll get them off. <laughs> I don't need to tell you, but it smells amazing. <laughs> Unfortunately, the area where I tore the tinfoil, it's come through and it's burnt the ends of the legs. So yeah, if I had twice as much tin foil and I could have wrapped them twice, that would have stopped that from happening. But luckily the rest of the meat's all gonna be fine. And it smells absolutely amazing. Just too hot for my hands. Now, tearing it out of the body all the meat that's inside the body. There's just loads of great big pieces of crab meat like that. Show you there, look. Inside of each of the joints, there's just a mass of meat. If you can manage to crack it open, I'm just using a stick to kind of lift it all out. There, look. 
lobster meat comes out in a one I've always found spider crab meat is a little bit more fibrous, it comes out in bits. And we're done. Nothing left there but empty shell. And we'll take all those bits of empty shell and put them in a rock pool in a minute. If I have missed anything, the crabs, the blennies, the gobies, they can all have a pick through and have a feed so nothing goes to waste. The tin foil, I'll take the tin foil with me and put it in the bin on the way up out of the beach. And the fire, the fire is... A couple more minutes and the fire won't even be there either. So by the time the waves have come up, most egg will saying actually they're going to be here soon. They've already, they've already locked me in. They've already cut me off. By the time the waves have all come up and washed away my footprints, there'll be no trace that I was even here. I think that's really important. Um, one of the things, one of the things that we've kind of taken on in our family, and we, we use it as a rule throughout our life, is that no matter where you are or what you're doing, do something to make it better. So there's an initiative at the moment called Take Five, which is spend five minutes or collect five items of waste from wherever you are. It doesn't matter if you're fishing on the pier or like today when I've been on the beach or we're going for a walk. At the end of every session or every trip, we'll spend five minutes or pick up five items of waste. It could be a bottle caps, it could be little bits of string, anything. And that way everyone can enjoy wonderful places like this. Now the dive today, I hope the footage has been alright. That octopus footage, I hope that's come out because that, that's probably one of the best things I've ever seen. And uh, I don't know if I'll put it in or not. But if the opportunity ever arises for you and you get, <laughs> you get the chance to wrestle a double figure bullhouse underwater, maybe think twice. I don't know if I'll put the footage in or not. It depends if it makes me look like too much of an idiot. But I've now got a massive bite mark in my wetsuit. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing more to say than I hope you enjoyed joining me. All the very best. See you later.